Okay, now uh, bring our Bodhisattva practices. Bodhisattva practices mean all the the altruistic motivation is naturally cultivated. If you can link up Bodhisattva practices meaning. So Bodhisattva practices, so many teachings on Bodhisattva practices. And among them, we have now uh, seven points of mind training. Uh, Buddhas to uh, Chachekawa, the, the main masters of this mind training, and commentary by fifth Shamat Konchoyama. So, having this as reference to your practice of Bodhisattva practices, mind training. So now we come to our uh, second out of seven points of mind training. Now second points where we have uh, uh, left earlier. Now when we uh, analyze earlier with the dream state of mind with the present awareness state of mind. So this is now analytic form of meditation which holds everything on mind. No matter what, everything what we have you know talk about the issues, the events, the uh, the things that related everything is somehow related with mind and it comes down, it draws down everything finally to the mind. So mind is the one that has to do everything. So since this is the case, if this is the case, then um, now the second line on the seven points of uh, se seven, second point, second line, yes, seven point second line, examine the unborn nature of awareness. So now here, if everything is mind, whatever we project according to the uh, confused state of mind, one kind of projections are uh, uh, things and even that we project. Uh, when we are not confused, uh, a different state of mind, things and even that we can somehow, uh, how do you say, have visions or have um, perceive. Uh, so these, everything come with mind. Mind is everything. So, when this is, if this is the fact, if this is the, if this is the case, what is mind now? What nature of mind that we are talking about? Where is this? How do it looks like? In what shape? What color? In which part of the body this mind resides? That you can find. So that way the analytic form of meditation is applied here. Yes. Uh, so in closing, uh, according to the meditator, sometimes the analytic form of meditation is more effective. So and, and uh, another case, the resting meditation is complete. Complete resting uh, or jobum is more effective or more useful, more effective. So, however, one one needs or meditator needs both. 
the analytic form of meditation and resting as form of meditation. So here we are now using or we are now practicing, we are now training more towards analytic form of meditation. So we analyze. First we analyze that things and even that we experience, that we have in our, these wake-up state of mind is in daily life, that we connect with the dream state of mind is, which in fact, there isn't, there aren't differences. Once we analyze, once we check, we can get into that kind of, you know, uh, final sort of research on these kind of results. Now, this context, the mind is everything. So now the next research or next one needs to analyze what is mind then? So mind, as we talked earlier, I, I, which I tried to explain earlier about the mind, that will now, if you link up, if you, if you, if you think that, that nature of mind, then you will, one part, you will get certain knowledge or certain understanding about the mind. But that is only not enough here. Clarity or clear seeing mind. So mind has this somehow nature. And that mind, so-called mind, now the important here is if this mind is exist independently, inherently, without depending on others. That is important here. If we, if we, if we think, if we, if we believe blindly without checking, we think the mind do exist. Yes, there, 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 there is one kind of special siddhant or, or kind of like principle following in Buddhism also, Bhavashika. So that is different case now, uh, Sotantra, sorry. Um, different cases because we have four, four main schools in Buddhism, Buddhism, yes. But now let's not go too much on this philosophical view, more like come to the practice practitioner, yes, because we are now, uh, as you say, uh, 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 drawing the main, uh, how do you say, uh, the essence or the main teaching of Buddhas that can be applied for the practice. So in this case, the mind, if we believe, if we think, if we totally blind, uh, blindly believe and trust that mind to exist, then it may also bring some how, you know, uh, 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 problems or difficulties, uh, it may not, one way, another way, um, it may not help us to free our, uh, the obscurations and these uh, mental uh, state of you know, clinging. Then we may cling, we may have some kind of like hold on, on the mind. Mind is everything then. So therefore, it's very important to clear the, the, the why before everything comes or everything is mind. Now, the next level is that mind is self-nature. If you look at, if you analyze, of course, mind is not like a concrete and very like a solidity sort of like object that can be seen. Yes. So now through the meditation, through the our intellectual, you know, the, the, the intelligence, we use this, where is mind, in what shape, in what form, in what color, that is very grosser level of research that we can do. But now, if you look at, if you research that, you do not find the mind any part of these bodies, including this brain, marvelous brain, including all these the main, the five points of energy, also you don't find. So, with this, require certain uh, uh, time 
to meditate or practice this, meditate on this, research on this, analyze on this with analytic meditations, try to find out, try to catch his mind. This is the next level of practice. So then, uh, uh, so when you meditate that and uh, analytic form meditation on the mind, then uh, you do not find the mind itself. Together with this, the next meditation on the remedy. To the remedy to liberate itself naturally. So next is continuing analytic form of meditation here. Now the, the way that we, we when we meditate, we check things and events how they are, how they appear, what is the <clears throat> True nature of things and even are, but are not true nature. What are like like fabricated way and uh, in very innate nature? We check and all these the checking mind, all these the meditator mind. They are opposing things and even which are not true or not uh, unreal the way they appear to us, the way they seem to us, but they themselves also possess the same nature of no true existing or not independently existing, uh, although they are, they are very strong, sort of like, uh, <coughs> they, they have very uh, capacity to investigate, to analyze, to check, to use this mind towards the things and events which, are, which aren't uh, yeah. there as they appear. So when you look at this opposing mind or the meditator of mind, uh, that also do not find, cannot be found, any part of the, our body, any part of the, our cells, channels, and energies. So, when that is the next meditation to be focused on, to be an investigated. So, with this investigation, with this checking, analyzing, then one will, one would find a sort of like answer that both subject and object, external and internal, all level of mind, either the mind that the, those uh, are very actively going towards uh, the outwardly world or aff uh, more like afflicted uh, sort of like uh, mind, or those mind that uh, that we use for opposing the mind that we meditate on, the mind that oppose directly to, uh, to to see, to get to know the real uh, introductions of our things and events in our life, or, in, or the mind, or the everything, let's say. So that way you meditate, that way you analyze, that way you research, you know, and then finally, the, the last meditation, you know, after these three steps is uh, done, yes, these three steps are done, then it says yeah. the essence of the path is to settle in the nature of alaya, the ground of all experiences. Yes. So since you find that answer by analyzing and by these investigations, 
Then you said Lamdi Puji Wandu Shas, or Puji Wandu Shas means settle down the true nature of the mind, which in fact, now as I said earlier, at consciousness. Yes. So Kunshi, Kunshi means all ground. Yes, all level of ground, or in Sanskrit, alaya. So, kunshi namse, alaya, the 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 earth consciousness. So, in fact, uh, one part of the earth consciousness is like external. One part of it is internal. Things and very actively, whatever we do, everything is like you know somehow the this ground nature of mind. There you have. There you put. There you keep every. Uh, habit of every percentage, every activities, you know, actively that is stored or that is uh, imprinted. So that imprinted, that nature, that level, that ground. If you, uh, if you get into this ground nature of the mind, the at consciousness, the mind. So there, if you settle down, there's a one possibility is. Settling down in that nature, which is, although it's like a, although it's like a lotus flower, bone or lotus flower, could, can be found in muddy uh, pond, water, or, or or river or lake, but the lotus flower itself is free from the stain of mud. Same way, ground nature. Although there are lots of imprint, lots of actively sort of like outer inner the the things and event or these are somehow the habit is built up or, or store up, but still it is free from this all habitual tendency of this mind. Project. And then one could settle down uh, in that state of mind. So that is the next uh, meditation after the three level of uh, investigation or three level of three level of anal uh, analytic form of meditation after you practice then you come to that that uh, uh, state of meditation so with this now the how you say settling down in this mind the edge consciousness or the alaya so vijana and janana, there are two aspects, in fact, which now, in fact, the very movement active mind can be settled down, according to Telopa, says, not uh, directing our mind towards the past, not, not to a future, and not following after any thoughts. What is the problem here is, Past and future is rather, you know, easier for meditator, respectively. But present, present is a little bit problem that we somehow, uh, without having control, we cling on the present thought, and we we somehow uh, not able to uh, release. Uh, we somehow not able to disconnect uh, from the present moment thought. Because present moment, past and future is, compared to present is easier. But present sometimes thought that arise constantly and then we also follow after the thought, you know, uh, constantly. And then uh, now important here is settling, meaning Nothing to hold on, nothing to grasp, nothing to cling on this past, future, present. That is the way that you need to settle, that we need to meditate and settle down. So that's how we train. That's how one must train. We try to train our mind to rest. Now this is called the second aspect of meditation, which is Resting mind. Earlier, analytic form of meditation. Yeah, we analyze, analyze mind is not settled, mind is not resting. But now this is mind is resting. Yeah, resting completely. 
without without in an investigation without analyzing mind has no any how to say duty to investigate to analyze mind is free from all duties yes uh, so nothing to grasp nothing to cling nothing to hold on free from all the past future present that way we need to settle down the mind yes so this is how one should rest the mind in that way yes. after we practice that way maybe we can have uh, i don't know like uh, an hour Two hours, three hours, uh, four, five hours that we can sit and we can meditate, we can practice, probably. But there must or there will be a limit. There will be a time that you may not able to rest in that state all the time. Especially training bodhisattva like us, that we are on you know path. We are not. master this practice and since we are training our time limit may be an hour or two three that we may sit and try to rest our uh, so that is one point important the, the 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 point or the meaning here is that when we meditate we use in this in the, especially for i mean i'm talking about especially for meditator who is like not very well trained medit- meditator but like us we need a place like a less disturbing surrounding less activity and uh, less movement and uh, and then less people and especially like a place like a mountain Cave that you be yourself, and and there's there in the mountain or uh, cave that you are alone, and there's no any disturbing uh, sort of activities from by seeing, by hearing, by whatever, and uh, then that way your physical activity also dramatically reduce. Ah, uh, that helps to reduce the mental. projection of thoughts and the less you have activities the less you have the things that you have to think about that you know plan about and that way you get less busy with as i said earlier the the sensory level consciousness when they get less busy then the mental state of mind can be focused easier Mm, less chance to steal or distracted for the different sort of whatever the activities there may be wherever possibility normally a cave how it is difficult cave at this what we call retreat center is which means less this is the place is suitable for practitioners like that or with that then your body position is also try to follow certain position that helps to how to say reduce you know the mental afflictions and so on so usually uh, very well known is seven points uh, of vairochana as number nine the posture which is very recommended uh, by our great forefather uh, marpa marpa very much emphasize on this posture yes this only this posture can help a lot if we can do accordingly yes uh, right way then it can it 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 has very much you know like impact on the meditations so sitting and the, the hand posture leg posture the way you see the way you put your teeth tongue uh, sorry yeah tongue and uh, chin and so on in the shoulder and the back spine and so on all these are very important uh so of course in the future if you get chance to meditate uh, then it's important to know uh as you say uh, practice right way uh now is more like a, here's more like a, you know like lecture on this so we need at least few days to meditate or practice that way yes to be, uh, to learn these things that way the 
how do you say, renouncing many activities and then the very quiet place like a mountain, like a cave or in your room or wherever you meditate, all try to help you to, how do you say, meditate and rest your mind in its own nature. So while you do this, for the training bodhisattva or meditator like us, we may not be able to do more than two, three hours, or few, a little bit more, maybe four hours, five hours. And either we have to wake up, either we have to eat something, drink something, either, or we have to, I don't know, like go to the toilet, or we are, or in case all this is not a problem, at least the mental state will be disturbed or distracted, <laughs> either past or future or present. <coughs> so, then what is next practice? The next practice says then, uh, between sessions, be someone who is in tune with illusions. So this is very important practice, especially for us, especially for us, because we, we spend most of the time in this state. You know, we don't get much time to stay in quiet place, to sit, you know, and meditate. Because the, the, the life that we have here is somehow, you know, uh, uh, difficult to get these kind of uh, chances or opportunities. So these are post meditations. As post meditations, this is very, very suitable uh, practice for all of us. So therefore, this is very important point. Now, how to meditate practically, technically, the post meditation, those who have been practicing, who is practicing bodhisattva practices, mind training, <coughs> mind training, then now how to do it is example, there are actually 12 different examples. Now here is only one is given. 12 different examples that go with this practice, the post meditations. Uh, one is like, <coughs> as, as it's given here, one is like, magician display magic. Yes, magician display magic. Remember now, I'm a magician, okay? So you are uh, here, uh, while I show magic, while I, while I display magic, for you are until the 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 normally the substances and the, nowadays magician is different trick yeah trick earlier the magician means they use substances and mantra meditation com this combination they can able to show magic example like milarepa example like you know. Uh, others, Midhapa is even one level, uh, the, the different magic again. Yes, Buddha, who became Buddha, who is like enlightened, that kind of magic is different. Then those who are not enlightened, nah, then they can show us, they can still display magic with mantra and substances, you know, combination, display magic. Then nowadays, trick, yes, trick, everything is trick they show. So whatever, but for your eyes, when I show magic, at least to your eyes, the all this whatever is showing looks like real. Example, there is let's say the flowers with the trick, flowers turns into birds, or umbrella, or drinks. While you are seeing this magic, this trick, you don't see the trick behind this magic, and then you see it's real. And another level of magic is a little bit now interesting part is there are magic that due to you know like the, the power of mantra and the substances, that when the substances go to only your eyes, you see that magic. When someone else comes afterwards, they don't see that magic anymore. <laughs> 
for because the substances is not you know contact with their eyes. So that magic is like you know some sometimes kind of very interesting. While you are enjoying the magic, someone what are you watching? There's nothing. <laughs> so you see the differences here. Those who are enjoying magic for their eyes, they are completely like truly enjoying the magic shows. The other people who did not get these mantras and these substances to their eyes, they don't enjoy the magic because they see the reality what is there. But for the people who already get these mantra and the, these these substances into their eyes, they see the truly magic or elephant or lions or birds or whatever that you you are, you are that in your eyes is showing. You know, see. So same way, this is the, the second example is. More may, maybe you know like uh, one way is maybe more uh, helpful because two two group of people one group enjoying magic enjoying maybe see everything as is shown another group they don't see anything as you are seeing so that way the things and event you know it says the post meditation you may use chairs like illusion alike illusion. Actually, the the fact is something else, but illusion alike. Yes, so that is very clear. The one group is everything is like illusion. Other other groups, there's no effect of illusions. So, and in fact, if we take everything in life, the things in, even in life, illusion alike, there the if we have this, how to say, practice this training with us, then that is one very good way that we can deal with all sort of lives, problems, difficulties, yeah, and all kind of sufferings. Just having this training, this support. Without having this, we hold on all kind of problems, sufferings, difficulties, and then more and more, more and more, more and more, somehow we add up, and then more and more suffering problems somehow increase, and finally we trip into heavier karma. Now here is the things here. Karma, yes? Karma... The sensory level or the consciousness, uh, whatever the mind and consciousness that you see, you, you project. And then next, the mental state consciousness would somehow then discriminate good, bad. Yes? Good, bad. Now here means, good means that you have desire, that you have somehow like you like. Bad means you dislike. Like, dislike, with, that you desire, that you attach, that way you accumulate karma, one way. You dislike, yes, you get aversion and aggressions, then that, that way, one karma that you accumulate. And then between this, a neutral state, you know. So karma basically is, ge mege lungate. Wholesome or virtuous, non-virtuous or unwholesome, and uh, uh, nothing declare neither wholesome side nor un unwholesome side. So karma start that way. Karma now here karma is you can you can maybe interpret or you can understand totally maybe different. In fact, what you like, what you don't like, what you have no any you know preference. Simply, this is the karma, actually. Nothing different. Nothing is totally different. What you like, what you dislike. What you like, you do everything. You know, either uh, sometimes we, we go up to that we want to harm somebody. It doesn't matter if I like it. We like it. Uh, something that we don't like, we can go Killing even, I don't like it. That is like sin. Up to that kind of karma, 
we can go. We can, you know, extend up to. So, karma actually is simply, you know, born or karma somehow started in that way. So, not to reduce this, to really have this, uh, how do you say, not to create, not to accumulate unnecessary this karma, which are cause of our problem sufferings. And now, when we have different view, different uh, 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 sort of like vision, different sort of like perspective, perspective towards, you know, the things and even that, or the karma, that the, the, the function of my mind, the like, disliking and the, you know, like testing and this and then the aggression and so on. When we have the, the, the support of everything as illusion, nothing exists inherently. A example like magicians display magic, illusion, illusionary illusion, you know, it's like illusion. The illusion is display illusion to us. Same way, dream, dream is one. Same way, they are, they are like, what do you say, uh, they are like uh, uh, desert, desert, and then far away with the, with the sunlight, and then you see there's water, you know? But in fact, it seems there's water. You, it appears there's water. The reality, there isn't any water. There is also one out of these 12 examples, you know. So, so there are many like that. Now, important here is, if we have this view, the view, important in Buddhism is view, yes, view. So, of course, different view, we can come later. But important here is, the view that we have normally, uh, naturally, or, or force, Fully, we accumulate unnecessary the karma or defilement. And from this one, one view that we get, that we have, that we per project, that we per perceive, and when we change this with the support of help of the illusion, dream alike, illusion alike, uh, like that way, if you if you if you if you have this view, then you can really save a lot of suffering problems in life. Yes, of course, more to that, then later on at there, the, this nothing exists inherently, uh, the, uh, the further sort of like the view is, Nothing exists inherent, in, inherently with dependent originations. This and that, because of this, that. Because of that, this. Right, left. Because of up, down. Because of tall, short. You know, this and that, this and that. These dependent origination functions, uh, if you have this view, this will help further Extending the view of nothing exists inherently. That view will help us to free from all the, how do you say, very, very strong, like a, like a, what you call, what we call a super glue, you know? Very super glue is very, very powerful glue. Once you keep it like this, then there's no chance it will come apart. Super glue. So our grasping and our clinging is like a you know, like that way, super glue. So this view will help us to loosen these clinging, these grasping, you know. That way we get liberation. The liberation is you know coming. So this is the post meditation which can help us. Yes. Okay, now we have a short break. <clears throat>